Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, foolish Galatians. Oh, Paul, come on. Be you making fun of us. You know what a fool is in the Bible? You think this old foolish Galatians. It says in Psalms, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. You read fools in, in the book of Proverbs, it's full of them. This is not just you're a fool. Context with fools in scripture with scripture. The Galatians have erred much. Remember, Paul knows the Old Testament. He's smart. He's been educated. He was one of the top of the Pharisees. And when he chooses his work, remember, he's sitting out writing. This is not preaching. He's writing down, okay. Foolish. That matches the Old Testament. What these people are. Who has bewitched you? Ooh, who charmed you? So they've fallen from chapter 1. And we're going to get back into the law and faith. The fallen that the Galatians had was somebody tried to put them back under the law. That you should not obey the truth. All right, so they've fallen from the truth. Paul is going to write to them about the truth and get them back in the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith. How did you get the Spirit, the Holy Spirit? Did you get it by the works of the law? Or did you get it by hearing of faith? Now, what's the answer to that question? Yeah. Hearing of faith. Remember, you got to have the Bible. you got to trust with your heart. you got to speak with your mouth. So, the law crept into the church of Galatians. And, it's, and we go back to, I'll read back chapter 1 real quick. It says, unto the churches. It's written to plural churches. So, this is a big problem. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, and are now made perfect by the flesh? But you've gone from the spirit of God, now you're relying on the flesh. That's wrong. You did it. They did a, a re reversal repentance. They repented unto God for salvation and got right. And now they're living right. Now they're repenting and going back. But if this is Gentiles, it's not truly a repentance of turning around. They they've gone off the highway on the law on the exit of law, which is not correct. So have you begun in the spirit and in the flood? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? So the church of Galatia is suffering for the word of God. Has suffered for the word of God. Is suffering for the word of God as Paul's writing. And he said, now that you're suffering, are you doing it in vain now? If it be yet in vain. Well, where do you stand, guys? Hear therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, 
Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? Even as Abraham. So we're going to use Abraham as a sample. The Abrahamic covenant. Believe God. There was no law for Abraham. Actually, I say there was a law from Noah. If any man kill any man, that man shall die blood for blood. But as far as the law we're talking about now here, the Jewish law found in Exodus 20 in, in, the, book, in, the, in the book of Moses, the law, it was not around when Abraham. There was covenants. There was a circumcision. There was, you're going to have a child in your old age. I'm going to establish that child as Isaac. At this point, we're looking at, we're looking at as Abraham as a Gentile. Even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So, Abraham believed God without the law. And God accounted, hey, that's righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now look at that. I'm a child of Abraham. But I'm not a Jew. I'm not under the law. I come from a Gentile called Abraham because he believed God and what we're going to see for a minute, his belief in God, we're going to see why, how I am in the same family of Abraham, even though I'm not Jewish. And that line from me to Abraham goes by faith. Abraham's our example. Abraham had an impossibility. What was that impossibility? I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to give you a child. You're almost 90 years old. And they're going to be as the stars as the sea, as, as the sand as Abraham said, okay, fine. I, yes, God, you can do it. Impossibility. Me, God, I've never seen Jesus Christ a day in my life. I've never seen heaven. But yet, okay, God, I believe you. Faith is the things of the... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the same thing between Abraham and me. We believe God what we could not see. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, hey, that's me. So we've got to be talking to the heathen or once Gentiles of Galatia. And he's using Abraham, the father of the Jews. And we're not going to run to Ishmael. And we're not going to run to the children of Kachita. We're going to run through Isaac. And we're going to see our salvation and our faith through Abraham. That God would justify the heathen through faith. Not the law. There was no law for Isaac. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham. Wait a minute. The heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. The gospel is the good news. Saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So from Abraham, those who have believed on faith by God, or God and placed their faith in God, when we run back to Genesis chapter 12, he says, all nations shall be blessed for you. Well, here I am today. And what is that main source from Abraham is that all nations will be blessed is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the, is the grandson, great, 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 grandson of Abraham. And how did Jesus Christ through that family begin? Abraham, you're going to have a child. Okay, well, look at that. All nations be blessed. You know what? That, that man had many children, but one child was the promised seed. 
Ishmael is the Arabian today. An Arabian, if he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he is just as safe as I am. If you could and you can't today, if you can find a Jew and trace his roots all the way back to Abraham, if he were to believe on the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, he'd be just as safe as, as Ishmael, the child of the bondwoman, just as much safe as me as a puke dog heathen. It says in Romans 10, there's, difference between, there's no difference between a Jew and a Greek. What is there no difference about the Jew and the Greek in Romans 10? We believe the same Jesus Christ. We believe God. That's faith. With no law. Now, I could run to the law and show you you're a sinner. Like a guy was listening to today, preaching in the streets in England. He said, if you stolen one thing, the Bible says, you know, thou shalt not steal. You're guilty. Okay, I can use that. But show me what you can do for the theft to go to heaven. Now, I can show you, you know, if you steal one lamb, you got to bring four lambs. And, you know, you got to, okay, I can see where you can rectify with the person that you stole. If you don't have anything to give, the Bible says the debt thief is to be sold as a servant. Okay, you can rectify with the person that you stole something from. Boss, I stole a paper clip. Here is three or four boxes of paper clips to make a, okay. But what do you do when you sin against God? That's the problem. Do you think God's going to take four boxes of paper clips? After he sent his son, after all what his son has done for us, you're going to rely on, oh, here, God, here's my sheep. It don't work because God, Jesus Christ, is the Lamb of God. We take away the sin in the world. Well, God, here's my bullet. Where's the brazen altar? It's not there. The temple being destroyed today shows you that the law is not intact right now. Temple's going to be rebuilt, but not during the church age. It's not for us. And the all nations sh and shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. How do you like that? Abraham and I have the same faith in God. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Oh boy. If you turn yourself to the law, you're under a curse. As for as it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Okay, let me ask you a question. Besides Jesus Christ, exclude Jesus. Who do you know, including yourself, has fulfilled that law 100%? No one. No one. So how can you come into this church and say it saved you? It works. If the only thing that law is going to do is going to put more of a burden on you. And what is the price for sin? Death. The wages of sin is death. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Now, it's plain and simple for us because we got the complete Bible. But remember, as Paul's writing this, Galatia has not heard this yet. Now, they're going to get this letter and it's going to be opened up and it's going to be read to the church. Hey, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. That What you guys are involved right now, God does not approve. And like I preached this morning at, at the farmer's market. For God so loved his word, so loved the world that he gave his son. What can you do outside of what Jesus Christ has already done to be pleasing to God? If you can do anything more in merit than Jesus Christ, then in the eyes of God, Jesus Christ is a failure, and he's not a failure. You're the failure. There are people right now 
and, and island nations off Japan and China, I don't know what they call that region, and they'll walk up and down on, on glass, on stairs, and make themselves bloody. They will nail themselves to crosses, and God looks at that like, you're an idiot. Because my son, Isaiah 53, has already done what needed to be done. And there's a thing that they do all that they do. They do it to be a big show. And what did Jesus tell us about praying in the street and, you know, mouthing off in the streets to make yourself somebody? I knelt down at a coffee table inside my house with, I think, two, three, maybe six people count myself in a room. No open show. It was after my salvation, after I trusted Christ, I went before the church and said, hey, I'm saved. So, in the sight of God, there's no law to be justified. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. What does just mean? Come on in. Just take off the ice. Just. Justice. Just. Our justness with God is our faith in Jesus Christ and the law is not faith of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them so okay if you decided I'm gonna live by the law you have now put yourself you got to do it 100% 100% of the day so that means let's take I, I always talk about the big ten because you can't get by number one Every morning, as soon as you, before you open your eyeballs, you get conscious, it's got to be God on your mind. If as soon as that moment of consciousness you're awake and it's not God, you, that's it. Don't go with the rest of the nine. Because the first commandment is God first all the time. And you got a problem. Because when we jump to what Jesus says about the law, we'll take this one. He says, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery. What are you going to do with your thoughts? What do you do if you're under law and you're sitting and you're dreaming and, and you start dreaming about adultery? You start dreaming about stealing. You, you want to blow people up or you want to shoot your boss or you, you're just having these wild nightmares. What do you do about that? Isn't that a violation of the law? How about this Jesus Christ? The way God said it to be. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses every one that hangeth on a tree. So there it is. You want to be removed from the curse of the law? It's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone by his death on the cross. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. There's Abraham again. There's the blessings. Abraham believed God. I believed in God. Abraham was blessed. I'll be blessed. And you know, he never got the land in his day. He died without getting the land. And yet the Bible says there's a new earth. That's Abraham and his seed. You know, I may die. Or rapture. Then I get the blessings. But Abraham was blessed. He sinned, didn't he? Sarah, tell him you're my, you're my sister. Well, that's a sin. Honey, we can't have a child, so here, take my handmaid. That's a sin. God did not approve of that relationship with that child. But wasn't Abraham blessed? Didn't he have great riches? Well, guess what? If I do in, by faith and believe what God has told me to do, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, what the Bible tells me as a Christian, am I not going to get pro probably gold, silver, and precious stones? That's a probability. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What is that promise of the Spirit? He's going to indwell in me. 
That spirit did not indwell in Abraham. Nowhere in the Old Testament did the spirit indwell. He came upon, but he didn't dwell. As soon as I got saved in faith in Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit moved in on me. He's with me. And he's never going to forsake me. And he's my comforter. And a comforter that he is. Brethren, he's talking to saved people. I speak after the manner of men. Okay? Though it be but a man's co covenant, yet it be confirmed, no man disannoweth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham in his, his seed were the promises made. He saith not. And to seeds, well, Abraham did have seeds. Ishmael and all the children of Keturah. As of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, Isaac, which is Christ. From Isaac came Jesus Christ. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, and then you run the line. Which you find in Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 1. Abraham believed God and look what he got, Jesus Christ, right? I believed in God and what did I get? I got Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Let's go to hold your place here. Let's go to Isaiah 53. And I'll show you something. I'll show you a remarkable word here. Isaiah 53. With Abraham. Isaiah 53 is a wonderful great chapter. And we don't have time to go through all this. Isaiah 53. Oh, where is it? And we'll start in verse number 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of living. He died. His For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked. With the rich his death. There's a burial. Because he has done no violence. Neither was any deceit found in his mouth. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul for an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. That's us. Those that have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, there we are, talked about the seed of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection by Jesus Christ. There we are. And thus we become the family of Abraham by Jesus Christ. Because once we see Jesus Christ as our Savior, we get the Holy Spirit. Don't we get the adoption into the family? So there we, we run the line of Abraham. So you can honestly walk up to a Jew and say, hey, I, I, I'm a child of Abraham. Through your Messiah, Jesus Christ. You want to make him mad? A dead dog that's in the family now. As of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Luke chapter 3. Matthew chapter 1. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul. That is, should make the promise of none effect. Before the law, there was that covenant confirmed to Abraham by God. That Christ will be of his seed. Well, the law came after. Exodus 12, 40 and 41. For uh, 400 years, they were in Egypt under bondage. God called them out, brought them to Mount Sinai. And gave them the law then. Well, what do you do with Adam to Exodus 20? There was no law. See, why didn't God kill Cain when he killed his brother? Because there was no law. Why didn't God kill, uh, what's his name there, that had the first polygamy, the first two wives? Because there was no law. 
But when Noah came out of that, that ark, then God said, okay, you kill anybody, then you should be killed. That was the law from that point forward. From Noah coming out of that ark, anybody who kills anybody, his blood, his blood shall be shed. And that goes all the way to the church age. That was discussed in the book of Acts at the council. So for if the inheritance be of the law, of the inheritance of Abraham, it is no more of promise, but God giveth it to Abraham by promise. So the law did not come when God made that covenant with Abraham. The law came afterwards. When God made a promise to Abraham, it was all by Abraham's faith. Wherefore, then serveth the law. Why do you guys serve the law, Galatians? Why are you doing it? There's no promise in the law. It was added because of transgressions. God wanted to show Israel their sins. And you know what their reaction was to the law? As we're now getting into the book of Exodus, where we're studying as a family, it was that, you know, that, that, uh, that calf they made. They're sinning more because they're sinners. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That seed, the seed hasn't come yet. Jesus Christ. So unto Jesus Christ was the law. So Jesus said in his ministry, the law was unto John. Talk about John the Baptist. Now we got a, a remarkable statement here because if the law was unto, unto John the Baptist, okay, let's say it stopped at John. Jesus fulfilled the whole law. What do you do from, G, from John the Baptist to the empty tomb? What was the means of salvation then? We see in the Bible, as far as what we recall, no one died and stayed dead in, in Jesus' time, as far as Israel. We don't know about the rest of the world. As far as that Jew is concerned, they're walking down the street. They're holding a coffin or a beer. Mother's crying. He stops the whole funeral progress. Hey, 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 get up. Get up. Lazarus, come forth. As far as the Jewish nation, no one could die while Jesus was alive in ministry. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. So if the law was present in Genesis 12, it, it would be no promise. Because at that point, in order to receive a covenant or a promise to Abraham, Abraham would have to do it 100% minus his faith. He couldn't. Wherefore then serveth the law, verse 19, talking to the church. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained, ordained, ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So, and Hebrews says something to this. I don't understand it. The law had to do something with the angels bringing it. What? I don't know. Something about Moses, something about God, something about that mountain, and something about angels. There were angels ordained in the hand of the mediator. And then after Aaron sinned that sin, Moses goes back and we read about, I think we read it tonight, or we're going to read it in the next chapter. And God says, I'm going to send my angel before you. At that moment, God says, hey, I'm backing off. You violated the law. With that cow, so I'm going to back off. I'm going to have my angel go before you. And that moment, you get an angel that follows them. That angel reports back to what, what they're doing. That calf seriously violated. The, I mean, they haven't got, God spoke to them. They haven't got the law yet written down. They've already violated the first and second commandment. God says, I'm going to have an angel. That's it. Uh, I'll read it to you. I'll see if we read it tonight. They, they violated and... Let's see. 
34. He says in Exodus 32, 34, Therefore now, go, lead the people into the place which I have spoken of on today, the land that he promised Abraham. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the days when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And then he plagued the people for having that cow. You know what the law brought those Jews? It brought the condemnation of God and the judgment upon God. You know what happened when they came out of Egypt? Oh, the Egyptians are coming. Don't worry. Go through the river. Go through the sea. Oh, there's no water. There's no water. Oh, oh. All right, just walk a little further. Here's a place you can get a drink. Oh, there's no food. There's no. Oh, calm down. Here's some quail. Here's manna. All right, here's the law. Lord, we're going to follow the Lord. We're going to obey your word. To the, really? Okay. Moses, come up here and get it. Kumbaya, Nina, strip off your clothes and have a fellowship and play in church. Aaron, what happened? Well, I threw in the goat and out capped this path. And here comes this calf. I don't know what happened. They me. Really? You're in the law now. I'm sending my angel. And you guys are plagued. That's what the law brought. God showed mercy to them before the law came. Hey, here's water. Here's food. Here, your enemy's gone. Now they're singing. You don't want the law. Because the moment you say, okay, law. You violate that law, you've got judgment and condemnation because you're no longer judged. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want the mercy and, and grace of God. So, where was that? Now, the meteor, you know, let's see. I'm in Galatians, too, right? Okay. Wherefore serveth the law, verse 19, it was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one. That's kind of weird. Because a mediator, it, he stands for both sides. There's an odd between two sides. But God is one. In my natural state without Jesus, I was at odds with God. He is holy. I wasn't. I needed a mediator. And Paul tells us to Timothy, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I needed someone to step in there and say, God, I will take his place. I will die for him. I will take his sin. All right. If I were to say, okay, I want the law, not Jesus. The law would tell God he's guilty. He's guilty. He's guilty. He's guilty. He's guilty. He deserves wrath. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law, if there had been a law given which could give life, verily righteousness should have been by the law so if there was a law that could give me eternal life boom but it couldn't how do we know the law couldn't give life the testimony to death burial and resurrection of jesus christ but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. There you go. So if you say to someone, are you saved? I never killed anybody. That's not the answer. What they're really saying, I have not, I have not killed. I'm a good person. No, you're not. The law says you're a sinner. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up. That's an interesting. You don't think shut up in the Bible? Shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So when the law was there, before Jesus Christ, 
Faith was shut up. You had to do. And in the Old Testament law, you say, well, it wasn't that faith. You didn't even know where you went when you died. We don't, I still don't know where King Saul is today. Did he get right or didn't he get right? The law left you with no assurance of salvation. You could have been right your whole life. But if you were to do a sin just before you died, if you didn't go to the temple, you didn't bring that sacrifice, what happened? But I know if I sin the day I die or the rapture happens, the Lord catch me with a beer in my hand drinking it. I'm saved. I know I am. Now I'll have to give account for my for my sins at the judgment seat of Christ, but grace and faith, hey, I'm saved, and I know it. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our, was our schoolmaster, a teacher, an educator, to bring us unto Christ. You know what you saw in the law? You saw that you were a sinner. You know what you saw in those offerings that Moses told us, that God told, us, told the Jew to bring? You saw Jesus Christ. You saw him in the Passover lamb. That's the law. Exodus is in the law. You seen the offerings. You could see Jesus Christ in each one of those offerings. Some of those offerings were taken outside the camp. Jesus Christ was outside the camp. So you know that camp, you know what that, that law showed me? It showed me A, it showed me I'm a sinner. B, it showed me Jesus Christ in typology. That we might be justified by faith. The law said itself. The teacher said. The teacher being the law, the law being the teacher, it says of itself, you can't be saved by me. You got to be saved by faith. You got to bring that animal to the altar. What, what is it for me today? You got to bring the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9, to the altar. That's God. I don't have to bring a physical animal. I don't have to bring physical blood. I can bring the blood of Jesus Christ. But after that faith come, okay, I believed in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. All right, so before a man gets saved, he's under the law. And let me see if I can bring this up real quick here. Probably not. Let's see, Bible. I got to think. All right. I got a file right here. There are 613 laws listed. You want to take your bet with 613 laws mentioned? You want to try that? 100%. You can't be 16, 12 and a half or 16, 12 and 7 eighths. Once I got saved by Jesus Christ and be Jesus Christ alone, that law went away. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, there we go again. I am a child of God by Jesus Christ. By what? By my faith in Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. I can call God Father truthfully. Not a man called Father. What's he? Now go back in the law and find me where David or anybody else said, God, you're my father. Find it. I have a personal relationship through Jesus Christ to almighty God, creator, who died for me, who loved me. I can call him father. You know what a father can do for you? All the things that your father can do. All the wonderful things he can do. And... Put that to God who can do all things. 
You look at the universe. You look at the earth. All God says, let there be a, a, a heavenly light. Let there be a light for the night. Let there be the stars also. Let there be trees. Let there be cows. Let there be camels. Let there be water. Let there be whale. At the voice of God, that God that had all that, I'm going to say, Father, I really need something. And again, there goes faith again. Father, will you give it to me? I believe you can give it to me if I've been well enough. I can believe if I'm not going to misuse this prayer. I believe you can give it to me. There goes more faith. For as many of you as have been baptized. Oh, here's people run to water for salvation. Unto Christ. Into Christ. Into Christ. Have put on Christ. That baptism is not water. I did not stand with a preacher while we were standing in Christ and been baptized in Christ. I have been put into Christ, immersed in Christ. So when God sees me, what does he see? He sees his son. He no longer sees my flesh. But then again, you get the you get the uh, the zombie apocalypse of my flesh coming out of the grave. Here I am. I'm in Christ. I'm safe. My state is in Christ. I'm safe. And then that 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 zombie pops out of the grave. Oh, sin, sin! I gotta put that thing down. That's a shadow. In God's all light, but when that shadow of sin comes up, get down. I'm in Christ. So I was baptized of water, yes. I was baptized, I believe it was a week after I got saved. I, Saturday afternoon I was saved. Sunday morning I went and told everybody. I witnessed to my dad. I believe they prepared my baptism the following Sunday, if not was within two weeks. I was baptized. Before that water baptism, the day I asked Christ, Christ, I came into Christ. Baptized means immersion. How do you know it means immersion? Did God take Christ and sprinkle him in my, my face? Here, here, here's my son, sprinkle. No. That's where you got to have the right baptism. I was baptized in Christ, no water. I'm in him. Christ is in me. The Holy Spirit's in me. My righteousness, my being before God is Jesus Christ. Now, my position is I'll step out in sin. That's wrong. But my state is in Christ. Have put on Christ. There is no, uh, excuse me, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Romans 10. There is neither bond nor free. You're in jail, you're not in jail. You're a servant or you're the master. There is neither male nor or female. Well, that's kind of, if you join Islam, you're a female. Camel dung is better than females in Islam. They don't treat their women right. In the religion I'm talking about, and, and physically too. But here, there's neither male nor female, for all, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So, it doesn't matter if you're colored, black, brown, white, yellow. I never see the yellow part. Female, male, young, old. You're a CEO. You're a janitor. You're working down the sewer pipes. No matter who you are, you are have faith in Jesus Christ. You are one. And what is that one? The church. And when the rapture happens, we all get caught up together no matter who we are. As long as we believe on Christ as our Savior, we'll be up there in the clouds that day when the rapture happens all together as one. Only ones left behind who are not the ones who have never believed in Christ ever. Those are the ones that stew under the law. They'll be they'll be left here. And they can have the law because guess what? During the tribulation period, the law comes back. But uh, that's another story. 
And if, now here you go, if, what's that if? Oh, I don't know. No, he's writing to a church. There are saved people in the church and there are lost people in the church. So he's writing to, if you be Christ, assuming that not everybody in this church is saved in Galatia. If you be in Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. Look at that. And hairs according to the promise. So after the great white throne judgment and all sin is put away, all Satan put away, everyone who is rejected and not believe what God has said has never put their faith and trust in God, is cast off in the lake of fire. And then new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem goes to the Christians, the church. The new earth goes to Abraham. And we might have, to, I don't know what's going to happen when we get to glory, but we might, I don't know if we travel around, but we might get that ability to go to the new earth and hang out with Abraham and all his descendants. As they will have the ability to come through into the gates, which are the 12 apostles of the Lamb, the foundations, which is the 12 foundations of the children of Israel, will be able to come with us in New Jerusalem, and the new outer space, the new heavens, which will be for the Gentiles that were before the law, and we'll be able to go visit them. And there we go. But the promise I get through Abraham is not a land, it's a city. He gets a land. My city is called Jerusalem, which is the capital of his land. And there'll be no enemies of Christians, and there'll be no enemies of the Jews ever there. I will curse them that curse thee, into everlasting fire which burneth forever. So, this church has gone off into the law, and it's wrong. And when you know churches today, how do you know some of the churches? I'll give you one name. And it's named for the law. Seven Day Adventists. They're violating by being in the law. So.